Hi, we're Richard and Jackie from Early Retirement Wonderlust. Regular viewers of our channel will know that back in January, we set ourselves some goals of things that we wanted to achieve in 2024. We also said that we would review them for you every quarter. So it's the 1st of April and this is our first review. So as we said, way back in January, we sat down, like most people, and set ourselves some yearly goals. There were some quite challenging things in there to make us really think about what we wanted to do with ourselves over the next year, and that we would review them with you. So here we are. So like all goals, it's dead easy to actually forget about them. So we did a couple of things. First, we committed ourselves to camera in January. Secondly, we sort of wrote them all down in a notebook. Um, and thirdly, we made that commitment to actually come back here three months later and let you know how we're going. Um, one of our big goals of the year was to just give a little bit more of ourselves to the YouTube experience. So we're going to try and do this without too many cuts. And um, it's just a quick catch up. So it's not like one of our normal videos, but we'll just see how we go. When we sat down and set our goals, we looked at it in four different areas of our lives. We looked at setting goals for our career. I know that sounds strange because we actually are early retired, but we do still have aspirations. We set goals for our health, for our personal development and learning, and for our own relationship goals. So what we're going to do now is to try and counter through those in a bit of a ad hoc <laughs> way and we'll see how we go. So the first area we set ourselves goals for was to do with career. Now that sounds a little bit weird because we're early retired but we still have aspirations and we called ourselves early retirement wonderlust for a reason and one of the main reasons that we wanted to retire was we wanted to get out there and explore the world and we've done quite a bit of traveling. We have so we have had um, quite a few weeks out in the French Alps um, doing what we call a half season. Yeah we just <laughs> we had two little trips out there uh, one with our kids which was just absolutely amazing and then one with friends um, but spending time out in the Alps was just a, an absolute gift. And actually really surprising how easy it was to live in the French Alps in a little VW camper van for six weeks. So we've had an absolutely amazing time. So we have got some plans for the next quarter. Um, we're a few weeks out from our first trip. We're going to head to the southwest, down into Cornwall and Devon, and hopefully catch a bit of early season surf down there. And then we are hoping to get out um, early summer to Europe again and we're wanting to go across to the Italian Dolomites and Slovenia and Croatia so we're in the throes of planning that trip at the moment. I did say one of my travel targets for this year is that I might want to visit a different continent if we can afford it and if we can fit it in. So we're doing a bit of research and we've got some ideas of where we might want to go but we need to look into that a bit more still. So the next area we set ourselves target for was to do with our little YouTube channel and part of that was to just continue what we're doing so trying to put out two videos a week consistently and then to try and be just a little bit more sort of present on camera as we get a little bit more comfortable in front of the camera. Yeah we're getting used to that now. Um, something that's absolutely stunned us is that for whatever reason our little channel isn't so little anymore and we hit 10,000 subscribers this week which we never envisaged in any of the planning. No, so a big thank you to everyone who subscribed. Yeah, thank and, you. Uh, it, yeah, as Jackie said, it's just blown our mind. And then another, like, stato fact that's blown our mind. <laughs> yeah, we've also had a video that's gone over 100,000 views. Again, absolutely gobsmacked by it. But thank you ever so much for watching. It does mean a lot when we get some really lovely comments from people that you do enjoy watching some of the things that we do. So then moving on to something that hasn't quite been as successful, um, <laughs> our plans for the house and garden. We have completely renovated the cottage, if you've never seen our videos before, um, and it's beautiful inside, but we still need to do the gardens. It has been winter, so we were never actually intending on doing any of the physical work in the gardens, but we still actually haven't got any ideas what we want to do with it either. So that is our quarter two goal. Yeah, it has to be. I think we've been... Well, I certainly have been doing some top procrastination on that and just putting it off and burying my head in the sand. So, yeah, that was uh, something that we've 
got a lot of work to do on that. In terms of myself, I've done some freelance writing for a number of years for VW Magazine, and one of my targets at the start of the year was to branch out and look at different publications. And we just had an article published in Motorhome Magazine, and there's a few more things in the pipeline there. So yeah, really excited really to just write for a different audience. We're still doing some writing for VW Magazine, but um, it's just nice to get out there. As Richard does most of the editing for our YouTube channel, I actually took on writing for our weekly blog. So my target was to make sure that I still kept that up to date weekly, which I've been pretty good at, actually. Um, and I did say that I wanted to do maybe once a month a little bit of an extra blog on something to do with our early retirement. I did do one in January and I have got one that's ready to be published this week. So I'm only a little bit out. But yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying the process of writing and our website is actually growing, which is lovely to see. And then the last thing we were looking at in terms of career was to sort of try and tighten our budget a little bit. Um, we have already been living to a pretty mm -hmm. tight budget, but we felt that we needed to sort of like make ourselves a little bit more accountable. Yeah, so we've had a budget since January of Taking cash out, we take £200 cash out a week. When we were in Europe and skiing, we still did that. We took out the cash, but in euros. Um, that needs to cover everything. It's um, to cover all of our food. It's to cover our petrol. And we do use quite a lot of petrol because we're back and forwards to Cheshire and to see Richard's mum, which is an hour's drive away. And firewood, which in the winter actually is costing us £22 a week. And again, we've been pretty good. It's only if we go away, if we go see our family, like this weekend, we went out for a drink at the pub with Luke. Um, so we're probably only £20 over. But just the being mindful of sticking to that £200 budget and having to really account to ourselves why we're spending more has been really good. And one of the things we've built in is on a monthly basis, we sit down um, and Jackie really helps me with the technology because she's an absolute whiz on online banking and we just go through our expenses for the month and just see how close to target we're actually coming in at. So yeah, when we were away skiing, we know that we spent a little bit over what we'd planned to spend. But when we were at home during the course of February, we actually saved. So overall in the quarter, we're quite happy with how that's going. So the second area that we looked at when we were setting our goals was to do with relationships. And obviously to us, one of the biggest and most important part of the relationships is with our friends and family. We had the most fabulous week skiing with both our children and their partners in January. We just had so many memories made, just nights out, lots of nights in cooking, skiing. We just had such a lovely time. And one of the things we found this year is that we've actually got so much more time for people because we were only talking the other day that we've never been around for so many sort of public holidays and weekends because when we were working, we always just used to disappear <laughs> off in the van and we were never around. Um, whereas now our family are hopefully finding that we're more available, we're getting more quality time with our mums um, and it's just a real blessing. Yeah, and our second ski holiday, we actually went away with some old work partners that we were really good friends with uh, back when we first started teaching and then as we had families sort of grew apart a little bit but we just had the most fantastic week with our camper vans in the valley <laughs> and then and then on the flip side we also were a little bit concerned about the fact that we were living in each other's pockets all the time so we obviously in early retirement want quality time for each other but we also want quality time apart and we've had some just really good time over the course of the last quarter to just slow down. So when we've been at home, we haven't felt that we'd needed to do anything too much, but we've just sort of existed in the Dales, haven't we? <laughs> we have. There's been days, I think, when Richard thinks I've gone a little bit like I've lost the plot because I just declare it a duvet day because we've got nothing planned. I used to love just spending the odd afternoon watching Netflix in bed with a cup of tea. Not Richard's cup of tea at all, but yeah, I found that really difficult and <laughs> I, I've never been one to sit and do nothing, but I know that it's, sometimes it's really good for me um, and to have time for myself and my own interests. So yeah, we're finding things to do and we've been quite intentional about doing that, aren't we? We are. Another one of our targets under the heading of relationships was just making sure that we are still meeting new people and forming new relationships and something that we really enjoyed is when we were skiing we met quite a few of you we bumped into quite a few people that had watched our Lazark's ski videos and 
we had a blast. We actually went out skiing on a couple of occasions with different people that we'd met that approached us because they'd seen us on YouTube. And there's quite a few people that we still keep in touch with, which is lovely. Yeah, we sort of, we're inherently shy people, aren't we? And we've just used it. It was a bit weird to start with, but we just used it as a, a really nice way of breaking the ice and just to get to meet people out there. We never thought that that would ever happen. Um, so that's lovely. Thank you for that. Um, we have struggled a little bit with the travel that we've done to make a lot of connections back in the Dales because um, we're always away. Um, we, we wanted to join in some of the village events, but it just transpired that either we weren't here or when those events were happening, family were up. So yeah, it's, it's something that is a bit of a struggle still, but we are getting good quality time with our neighbours as well. Yeah, we've got lovely neighbours and we've been round for cups of tea a few times. So yeah, it's good getting to know the people in the village, but we do realise that we still don't have that quality time to invest being in the village and being part of that community wholly. And the final thing that's really important for, for me with my mum's situation, mum has dementia. Um, so I've got to devote a lot of time to looking after her house because mum's in care and she is having a great time. Um, and it's probably the best move that's ever happened. Um, but there's lots of bits and bobs to do with the house that we've got to sort out. And having the time to do that has just been amazing. And then it was mum's 80th birthday the other weekend. So for mum, in the moment, she absolutely loved it um, and the whole family were up. And again, it's just about making memories and making that time really precious for mum as well. Because, um, yeah, she, in the moment, she absolutely loves it. So one of the big things for me, sounds a little bit strange, but I was just becoming absolutely obsessed with my Garmin biometrics and it was just not doing me any good at all. So it was actually sending my stress levels through the roof when I was concerned about my body battery uh, analytics and I could not keep that under control. So I did the honorable thing and just switched it off and I feel so much better for it. Uh, it doesn't matter how well I sleep, it monitors my sleep, it monitors my stress levels and simply getting rid of that has been amazing. We were also really open with you in the fact that we're fair weather cyclists and in the first <laughs> quarter there is absolutely no way we were going out on the bikes. We've done more than enough activity in the mountains and the bikes are just it's too cold, wet and miserable. Um, I was meant to service the bikes. That hasn't happened. Ready for quarter two. But quarter two only starts today. So you tomorrow you're going to get those bikes ready for us to start going out because we're at home all week. Happy days. Um, <laughs> and then a little thing is just in terms of micro habits is I really enjoy my morning runs and I might not enjoy it when I'm getting out of bed and it's cold and it's wet and it's miserable but once I'm out there I'm really enjoying it and I'm committing still to do two morning runs a week and it's really good for both my health and my mental health. For my health target, I set myself two targets. One was to do an average of about 300,000 steps a month. So that's sort of 10,000 steps a day. Um, January, I was well over about 320,000 steps. February was a strange month. I was poorly for a week and I didn't get out and about. So I didn't hit it, but um, I still did about 280,000 steps and didn't beat myself up about the fact that I didn't get that target because I could have gone out in the rain in the last two days to get those extra steps but I just balanced it and thought why would you do that when you really don't want to but actually in March I'm up to about 370,000 so if I average it out I've definitely done the steps I set myself the target for. The second um, challenge that I always set myself every year is to climb the equivalent of Mount Everest four times um, Skiing in the mountains, you would think I'd be able to get lots of elevation, but at the moment I'm sitting on around three quarters of my first Mount Everest. I'm not too bothered about that because I knew that the winter months is a little bit more tricky to get out and about in the hills for any length of time hiking, but um, we're going to the Alps for the summer. How hard can it be to do all of those metres of elevation in the summer? I reckon it's going to be pretty easy. <laughs> And then my last health target I set myself, which I think I failed at abysmally at the moment, is that I want to start doing some yoga. So in January, for the first couple of weeks when we were at home, I did do yoga daily and I found some great YouTube tutorials and thank you for the recommendations that people sent through. Um, but it was really hard keeping on top of that when we were skiing. Obviously, yoga in a VW camper van was just never going to happen. So I haven't really got round to doing it and back into that routine since we've been back. 
but I'm hoping summer months being able to do it outside the van when we're traveling and actually I really enjoyed doing the process of learning how to do yoga so it is something that I've now reminded myself that I want to do. And that's one of the things that we found difficult just per se in terms of our health. And we are trying desperately not to beat ourselves up about it. But when we're on the road and we're in the van, and particularly when we're in the van at winter, it's just so difficult to keep up with your normal routines. But I guess, you know, we, we might not have been doing our morning stretches or our morning yoga, but we were skiing for six hours a day in the mountains. And walking to the ski funicular every day. So that was two miles every day. So we were very active. So again, we're not going to stress that we've not achieved those targets, but they are still there. And reviewing this has reminded us of what we did want to do. And then the final thing was probably to do with sort of mental health. And um, we met a, a very inspirational character when we were out in America. He was a through hiker. Um, his trail name was Hippie. We don't actually know what his, his real name is. Um, but he, um, he just sort of gave some really valuable advice that resonated with me in particular in terms of just having no expectations for the day. And I, I used to try and keep an iron grip on everything in my life and I think with the help of Jackie I've just sort of chilled out a little bit. Yep Hippie said if you have no expectations for the day then you'll never be disappointed and that's very true. It might sound a little bit twee as former teachers but we firmly believe in the importance of lifelong learning and that is a central theme in some of our goal setting. One of the challenges I wanted to set myself this year is to do some multi-day hiking um, bit of trekking really, probably in the mould of hippie. So in a very modest way, I want to do the Dales Way. There's not really much that we can do in the middle of winter for that, but we've been trying to spend more time on our feet. I've done the reading around it. I've done some sort of provisional planning, even if it's just up there in terms of what I want to do. But yeah, that's something that's coming up in the next couple of quarters. Something else that we both set ourselves is to, to continue making sure that we read for pleasure. When we were teaching, it was something that we really lost sight of. I used to love reading and I didn't read for about 10 years when I, my last few years of teaching. Um, so yeah, we're both packing lots of books to take away in the van. We're both plowing through lots of different novels. Richard's found a newfound thirst for, is it Bernard Cornwall books? It's Bernard Cornwall, yeah, I'm <laughs> plowing through the volumes of The Last Kingdom and uh, yeah, really enjoying it. I'm just going to put it out there that the books that I'm reading are not of any quality like that, but I am enjoying reading them and the escapism of them. Finally, my brain is settling a little bit to be able to read. I opened up with you guys in January about like a strange fixation I'd suddenly got for drawing architectural drawings and uh, sketching. Um, and I set myself like a, a little personal target of doing one a week over the course of this quarter, which would have been 13. Um, drawing tutorials. I've only actually done, I think it's about six or seven, but I have enjoyed it, but I just need to knuckle down and, and commit to it because it's hard to build a habit unless you do it regularly. So I need to commit a bit more to that. Something I've had to really work on, uh, Richard actually set up and built our own website um, and I've had to take on writing the blogs, which is fab, but I've also had to take on learning how to do the process of working on a website and I've actually really enjoyed that. Um, I find myself finding little YouTube tutorials if I can't do something rather than just saying, Richard, can you show me what to do? Because I can't rely on you to always do that. So I'm feeling quite pleased with myself that I'm getting better at being computer literate. And then we just said that we wanted to commit to learn a little bit more about YouTube. So I continue to keep hitting YouTube to learn about YouTube <laughs> of editing and things like that. But probably the biggest thing for us was to lighten up a little bit and do try and do a little bit more live type stuff rather than worrying too much about it. So this is a prime example. Don't know how well it'll go, but we'll see. So that is it. That's the end of our first quarter yearly goals review and it's actually quite surprising how much I feel like we have already achieved or we've kept on track there were a couple of things where I thought you know I can't even remember that I said I was going to do that um, yoga being an example I went with a flourish in January completely forgot about it so there's some things it's reminded us we're only a quarter of the way through the year so I've still got plenty of time to get into that habit so we can't actually believe how quickly the year's going. Um, the next review is going to be at the end of June. And if that quarter goes anywhere near as quick as this quarter, um, who knows where we're going to be. But that's about it. So see you later. Bye.